With me, I have longtime friend and breakout gaming partner, Ted Forrest, six-time WSOP bracelet winner. So, Ted, how did you get involved in poker? Well, when I was about eight years old, uh, my friends had older sisters, and I used to play poker games with their 15 and 16 year old boyfriends. And you know, I'm here this eight year old kid and I'm, I'm getting all the money. So I'm walking around with like 20 bucks in my pocket, which is like, yeah. At eight years old. So, uh, and I just operated with the simple premise of win more on my winning hands and lose less on my losing hands. Mm. Whereas all those guys were just playing every hand. Just to play as we so frequently see. Uh, obviously, you've had a tremendous amount of success in tournaments, six bracelets, untold caches. Um, of course, I don't want to go into all that, but also you have played on some of the biggest stages in live cash games. Uh, tell us about those. Well, I played uh, the Texas banker, Andy Beal, uh, about 10 to 12 sessions. That was the type of stuff that just gets your heart pumping. Uh, he would give us two or three days notice that he's coming to town and people would just go into a mad scramble trying to liquidate <laughs> all their assets and put up money to play. Uh, the first time I played him I was 10 and 20,000 which was two, three times higher than I'd ever played before. 10 and 20,000 limit. Yeah, limit hold'em. Uh, pretty much emptied out my box at the Bellagio and uh, bought into the game. They were, he was playing Chip Reese, heads up, and uh, I sat in and immediately got stuck about 400,000. I'm thinking, what am I doing? You know, because those blinds come around really fast yeah. three-handed. Uh, I finally won a pot, studied the ship. Uh, a few hours later, uh, I was up over a million. and. Uh, at that point, Andy said, uh, I want to play you, heads up tomorrow, 20 and 40,000. Wow, Andy, 20 and 40, that's pretty steep. But uh, anyway, the poker players uh, bought 70% of me, and uh, then I played them 20 and 40 the next day and won 3.6. So. Oh, wow. So what about, you used to play stud with Larry Flint, correct? Yes. Yeah, Larry's a good guy, and uh, that, that, that was one great stud game. It still, it still goes today, once in a while, uh, whenever Larry can play, which is not as often as he used to, unfortunately. His wife has kind of laid down the law and only lets him out of the cage maybe once a month or so. <laughs> okay, we all know how that goes. Uh, surprising you get out of the cage so often, because I know you're married with a new kid. I'm married with a new kid, and it's, uh, I mean, it's the happiest time of my life, to be honest, but uh, I don't see it as a ball and chain. I see it as, as just, uh, you know, I walk in the door and my kid does the happy to see daddy dance, and it's just the greatest thing in the world. Good for you. Good for you. Um, tell us about the most, I mean, I've known you for a long time, and you've been involved in a lot of weird prop bets and all kinds of stuff. Tell us about some of the most interesting prop bets you have been involved in. Interesting or ridiculous? Either way, they're both. <laughs> uh, I would say the, the craziest prop that I ever did was uh, I ran a marathon on the 4th of July in Las Vegas on the uh, UNLV track, which is made of red urethane. And this was the, the previous day I had lost 250,000 in a big game, and I, I did this bet for 7,000, just to punish myself, <laughs> and, and I did. Did you win the bet? I won the bet, but I felt like a loser. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> there is um, a, a legendary, virtually legendary poker game. You had heads up with, uh, he's a, a main event winner, Hamid Dasmolchi. Um, can you tell us what happened with that? Oh, that was, wow, that was at the Mirage, and uh, that was one marathon session. Hamid and I played for, I want to say about 104 hours, 
Wow. And at the end, at the end of that, they had to take Hamid out of the mirage in an ambulance. And uh, he ended up being okay. But uh, I, I used to joke it was because all of the bad beats that I put on him. But I'm telling you, this man smoked probably 50 to 60 packs of cigarettes during that time. Wow. And he only lit one match. <laughs> Each cigarette, he'd lit light with the other one. Wow, and 104 hours? Yeah. You know, I've been in poker a long time, and that's got to be the longest heads-up match I ever heard of. Have you ever heard of anybody that played longer than that heads-up? I don't know about heads-up, but uh, I think Phil Locke holds the record for longest uh, session. I think he did 100 and, I want to say 109, 119 wow. hours. But uh, heads-up, I don't know. All right. I approached you a couple years ago about this um, project that we have with Breakout Gaming. And uh, I can remember it. As a matter of fact, you were the first one that I called. Why did you get involved with us? Well, we've been friends a long time. And you did mention uh, some of the other people that were getting involved. Huxied, Todd Brunson, Toto Leonotis. Um, I think those are great guys. I've been friends with them for 20 years. and things that they get involved with and, and you, I know, ha have a really good chance of being innovative and something that will actually work and succeed. So it, it was really a group of guys that I wanted to get involved with. Good. Well, we have our Play Money site at Breakout Gaming open and uh, I'm sure that the guys that are involved would love to see you. So hopefully we can play with each other. Just play money goofing around because Right now, I don't know. Well, I don't really want to play with you, but I don't, <laughs> I don't mind playing poker on the site for fun. That's, that's cool. Good. All right. You made it to day two in the stud event also, along with Jeff Lissandro. And I know it's getting close. Jeff had to sneak out of here. So I hope I see you at the tables at Breakout, Ted. And okay. Good luck today in game day two. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.